Hi, I'm Greg Street from League of Legends at Riot Games, and I am doing Wired League of Legends support. Diabolically Red asks, Hey Riot, I've been playing the game since Season 3, and I never really understood how you picked the free champ rotation. Is it algorithm or something else? I mean, this is the kind of thing, it's a little bit of art and a little bit of science. We try to make sure that there are enough champions available that you can make a team comp of all free-to-play champions. There are also some that we'd like to have in the rotation because they're particularly good for, particularly for new players, and we have others that we don't really want in the rotation because they're really hard to learn or they're about to be, you know, massively remade or things like that. Candy Cane asks, when will Teemo get deleted? You know, we've tried to delete Teemo several times. There's a quirk or something in the code. He just keeps coming back. Can't keep a good demon down. NECL Samurai, is that Salt Samurai? That'd be funny. I see there's some quality life changes come to ARAM, but why is the Oracle Extract still a thing? It ruins any uh, trap invisible stealth champs. I think what he's getting at is it really ruins Teemo, which I think was partially, honestly, the origin of the item. You know, ARAM wasn't designed to have champs with a ton of invisibility around all the time. I think aside from Shaco and Teemo, it shouldn't affect that many champions that much. Ska asks, hey Riot, ARAM was released four years ago after you started. Why is it taking so long to release another person? Permanent game mode. I mean, that's a great question. Overall, we view Summoner's Rift as kind of the core League of Legends experience. We're not against offering other maps, but we want to make sure that that they're good ones and they really add something to the game. The Howling Abyss, the ARAM map, is really popular among players. I think that one's a keeper. It obviously has a large audience. I think the real answer is if we could come up with a really good mode that we felt good about and players enjoyed, then we're fine having another permanent game mode. But it's not a goal of ours to go out and add a ton of different maps to League. If that makes sense. Uh, Magic Turtle says, I'm new to League of Legends and I need a good beginner champion comment please there's a lot of good beginner champions i think the best thing to do is just pick a champion that you're excited about even though league has 140 something champions when you're just learning the game you probably want to pick one or two and play a lot of games on that character until you really kind of understand the basics there popular good champions i would say are like misfortune um zed Master Yi, Garen is a common one. I would stay away from, say, um, Callista, Azir, Aurelian Soul. They play really differently from kind of the, the standard league champion. It's never too late to pick it up. Many Different Phenomena, that's a great name, says, why did you all decide it was a good idea to make the death timer so long and one for all? Over time, the kind of classic Summoner's Rift experience has gotten longer and longer. And when the average game time gets to be in the 40 minutes or so, that feels a little long to a lot of players. Uh, we don't want to arbitrarily just say, look, League of Legends should be a 20 minute game and that's it. But we do want to make sure that the game doesn't drag on and on or it's kind of hard to fit in your um, lifestyle. It's not that one for all is necessarily always tied to long death timers, but that was an experiment we were trying to see if we could make the games end a little faster. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce this name. By Hef Nero iTunes. Why is the entire team punished in ranked for someone rage quitting? We see all these unneeded gameplay changes each week, but the rank system is set stagnant for so long. We deserve updates this season. We are changing ranked. We are changing it for next season because touching ranked is kind of one of the scarier things we could do for League of Legends. It's an easy way for us to screw up the game if we're not careful. These changes, like any change to rank, tend to be a little controversial, so we're giving players plenty of time to kind of react to what we want to do and make sure that when we finally do launch the new version of rank that it's something that you guys are excited about. As far as why everyone is punished for someone rage quitting, we don't ever want to set the team up in a situation where you guys are kind of voting and saying, hey, we're going to make one player the sacrifice and you quit so that we can all don't get punished as much, but we can like end the game sooner or something like that. And as a tip, it's probably not going really badly at first blood. You don't need to give up that quickly. Nilkski asks, can you guys please, please, please put trading in um, all random earth? We're talking about it. You know, we had trading in ARAM, which is all random, and we just kind of wanted to try to see if we could improve the Earth experience by having the champion selection be random as well. If that seems like a popular change, and the, the whole kind of history of Riot turning Earth on and off is pretty complex and probably would take longer to explain than I should go to right now, but short term is if it seems like a good change and it's something players really like, then we could certainly consider it. Um, related to that, Richie says, please bring back old Earth. All random Earth is so boring because you only play with popular champions. You can't try new champions. And that's why all random Earth is a little bit hated. We have a weird history with Earth. Earth tends to make League players quit playing League of Legends, which sounds really weird. But we see this huge hangover effect whenever we turn on Earth. Players play it a lot. And then they stop playing League, and sometimes they don't even come back to League. So we're faced with this really weird situation of, this is something players really love that makes them actually quit the game. So we have to decide, as a player-focused company, do we want to be so player-focused that we kind of put ourselves out of business, you know, supporting Earth or not? Roma says, I downloaded League of Legends and I am so confused. The game wants me to battle with another player, but I still do not know how to control it. Roma, we have just updated 
completed the tutorial experience for League of Legends. The one we had has been in the game forever and it was not doing a great job at teaching new players how to play the game. The best way to learn League of Legends is to find a friend who plays League of Legends and have them teach you the game. That's still the best way today, but we realized that we were kind of shirking our responsibility by not offering a way that you could try to pick it up yourself. I think if you tried it again, the game will do a little bit of a better job of kind of explaining, here's where you are, here's where you want to be as a League player and kind of help you take the, the steps to get there. Ian McIntyre says, hey guys, I don't know where to ask this formally, but is there a chance you could introduce a help ward here ping? That's actually a really cool idea. I'm not sure if we've talked about that before, if it's somewhere on the backlog, but it seems like a useful thing. We've been trying to make our ping system a little more powerful so that it, people can use that to kind of communicate with your teammates because it's faster than having to type something out. Guang asked, my boyfriend has been crying because he bought a new patch to be released today with Pike in it. I said that's not the case. He insisted that usually Riot releases champions a week after it was first on the PVE. I mean, generally that's how it works out. We put a public beta test up and if it you know, all goes well, we don't need to make major changes, then we'll release the champion. But that's not a hard and fast rule. It's more about how we want to release the champion overall. And with Pike, as you probably realized by now, there's this huge event that goes along with him. You know, it's very Bilgewater themed. There's the ARAM map turned back on and some new skins and that sort of thing. So we wanted to make sure we could drop all of that at the same time. Aaron says, so how long until League of Legends Battle Royale game mode is announced? We had a really hard time even getting Hexakill to work where we have six champions on each side. I'm not sure we could get a hundred or more champions into the game. On the other hand, there's some really cool things that Battle Royale does that I'd love to be able to capture. Um, for example, the expectation that you probably won't win, you'll probably lose, so you're just kind of in there to have fun. That's a really nice element, whereas in League, statistically, if our matchmaking is working well, you're going to lose about half of your games. I'd love if there was a game mode in League like that where you felt like you were kind of in there to do crazy things and see how far you could get versus is like crush the enemy team. But whatever form that takes probably can't be a, a battle royale. Uh, Mike, wow, how did you get that name? Um, hello, as a support main, is it possible to get an end game stat for damage dealt by ZZ Rot and Banner of Command? That's a great question, and we actually have some plans to improve the stats we offer. The, the ones we do now have been, you know, that system hasn't been touched in ages, and something, you know, it's not, you're not gonna see it in the next few patches, but long term we would love to offer a lot more stats, particularly so players who aren't so focused on, you know, dealing damage and getting kills will also have some stats they could be excited about or, or try to improve over time. Then Sobel asks, hey guys, one quick question. Do you lose more LP when you surrender instead of letting the enemy destroy your nexus? I think the, the, what he's trying to get at is, if I'm going to lose, should I quickly surrender to lose fewer LP? And the answer is, the game doesn't really care how you lose. It just gives you, you know, you lose LP when you lose. So you shouldn't worry about trying to game it. If you're going to lose elegantly because you surrender, or if you're going to go down fighting to the end, it's, it's kind of all the same to the game. Uh, Jubal says, lol to when? Honestly, probably never. Like... League of Legends is an ongoing game. It's something that we support. It's something that evolves over time. I think the only reason to launch a League of Legends 2 would be some kind of cynical marketing campaign where we were like trying to get players, you know, excited about the game again. But it shouldn't require that. We should be able to get players excited about the game because League of Legends is a good game, not because we need to kind of rebrand it and relaunch it. And I would hesitate to ever like take away players' accomplishments and say, hey, just start over again. Um, and this probably sounds like I am scrubbing on a bunch of other games out there, which is not all my intention. I'm just saying for League of Legends, it's about League of Legends, not about the, you know, the sequels that we make every year. Yes, I think that wraps it up. We've got a lot of great stuff planned this year for League of Legends. Hopefully some cool surprises coming up at the end of the season too. So thanks a lot.